So you have a feature in your game and someone's come up with a different version, not just polish, not just a minor tweak, but something that is a fundamentally different way to approach this feature. How do you go about deciding whether or not you should go the new way or if you should keep going with the old way? So the first thing to start with is to remember that probably the feature you currently have is going to continue to get better. Some people will fall into this trap of looking at a feature in a game as if it is static where it currently is, and then look at the new version of the feature through this rose colored lens where they imagine it in a perfect state. And that's not a fair comparison because what you're comparing is the reality of implementation against the imagination of the new and novel feature. A great example of this is balance and your progression systems. You will reach a point in the game where your balance is kind of there, your progression systems are kind of there, and there will be an inclination from certain developers to point at whatever game they just recently played and tell you that their systems are so much better than what you currently have or what you're going to have. You hear developers call this last game-itis. That's exactly what it is. When you are looking at systems that aren't done and someone is pointing at a game that is done and suggesting a directional shift, you have to really consider whether or not the new direction is actually better or is it more just that they can point to a much more done example. So remember what you have is probably going to continue to get better. That being said, some implementations of features have a plateau of quality. They can only get so good. And beyond that point, you're getting slightly bitter, but effectively you've maxed out their quality potential. First question, does the new implementation, does the new direction actually have a higher quality plateau than what you currently are doing. And not just a little bit better, it, there needs to be enough differentiation so that you have confidence that this is really actually better enough to be worth the disruption of the change. Because if there's basically no daylight between the plateau of the current implementation and the new one, then you're basically inside of your uncertainty and you're better off finishing what you've got and accepting that what you've got is probably going to end up being better because of the amount of polish time you're going to be able to put against the thing you already have is going to be much higher than what you're going to get against something where you throw what you've got and start over again. This is where a ton of narrative churn lives. Is the new narrative direction that's being suggested better? Is it better enough? One thing to remember in a story-driven game is that there's always some degree of compromise going on. Your narrative has to live within the gameplay and the gameplay has to live within the narrative. So if people are feeling like the narrative is clunking, is that because it's serving the gameplay or vice versa? To make a change, you might be making one of those things better at the expense of the other. So again, really consider whether the new direction is actually better in the totality or if it's just different. And if it is better, is it better enough to accept the consequence of the churn you're about to introduce? But okay, let's assume that you've convinced yourself that there is significant space between these. This new direction is better. When complete, it will result in something that is significantly better. And there is consensus on that fact. The next question is to think about how this feature is going to come together. Broadly, features kind of come in two flavors. There are those that have a very long, big plateau where it's relatively easy to get them to something that's pretty good, and then they kind of Flatline. It's hard to get them much better than that. You can get something up and running that's pretty good, and then maybe it's going to take an incredible amount of effort to get them much further than that. There's a different kind of feature where they only work in perfection or near perfection. And all of your steps along the way 
towards that near perfection are actually worse than what you already have. You often see this when you are dealing with narrative features. The pedestrian or cliche or simple way of telling the story is very easy to get to pretty good, but you're not going to get much better than pretty good. Whereas the trickier direction, the more clever direction, the one with the greater emotional payoff might fail to evoke any emotion until the very last second. And the reason why this is relevant to this decision making process is you need to ask yourself, can you afford the time and risk of a feature that is going to be bad until it is good? A feature that is good until it is great can often be a lot better than a feature that is awful until it is amazing. So how do you make that decision? Well, you really need to ask yourself, do I have the time to quest for amazing in this feature? What's the consequence if I fall short and I'm stuck with bad? Is this feature far enough into the edges of the game such that if it falls short, that's still okay? Is it right in the middle of your critical path so that if you fall short, you've basically destroyed the game overall? In some cases, that might be still okay because you need amazing. And the consequences of, of it still being bad is just that you are going to keep working to make it amazing. And it doesn't matter because there's no world in which you run out of time because it essentially holds the entire game hostage. But that's not usually the case. Also, this curve isn't really just an indication of effort. You aren't guaranteed to hit that inflection point in that awful until it's amazing feature. Usually that's an indication of some requirement of skill. Part of your questioning when going from the pedestrian to the risky is, do you have the right people to make that leap? Do you have the skill set necessary to chase that higher plateau? Or are you going to reach for it and then have a high risk of falling short? A great example of a feature that's awful until it's awesome are really compelling prologues. Prologues are super complicated. They have to do a lot of things. They have to onboard the player to the world, to the gameplay mechanics, to their character, to the followers they may be picking up along the way, to the way that you expect them to play the game. And it all has to be done fast enough to keep me engaged in the experience that I'm having. You can do a fairly pedestrian prologue fairly easily that essentially just checks these checkboxes off one by one and gets the job done. That's pretty low risk, that's not very hard to do, but you're not gonna end up with a prologue that's amazing. On the other hand, it is possible to do amazing prologues that weave between all of the different things that need to be done very almost seamlessly and keep the pacing fast and going and keep the player engaged. The problem is, is that is a very complicated construction. And until all the pieces lock into place, that prologue is likely going to feel pretty bad. It's going to be failing to do the onboarding, or it's going to have weird clunks that feel really bad in the narrative. As a result, it only works in its totality. So should you move from the all right prologue to the hopefully amazing prologue? This is one of the places where the answer might be yes, because that first hour or two of a player's experience with the game really colors the rest of their experience. So questing for something that might be way better if you can pull it off may be worth the risk, but be honest with yourself about whether or not you can pull it off because a prologue that's trying to do so much more and do it better and knit it together might actually make your game worse if you don't fully execute on that vision. So sometimes you're going to need to accept the good enough feature because the risk of the great feature is that you might end up with a bad feature. Occasionally, you have the opposite version of this such that even the bad implementation of the new direction will be better than the good enough 
implementation of the current direction. Now, if you have that, this decision is trivially easy because if the clunky version, the more aggressive direction is gonna be better than the pedestrian thing you've already got, decision's already made for you. Just go that way, get that in as fast as possible, and then you're already better, and you're just polishing from there, that's a great, easy decision. A good example of this immediately better feature is probably the free jump in Dragon Age Inquisition. Even though it introduced tons of bugs into the game, even though it didn't ship in that initial first form, as soon as you put it in, you could see, oh, right, this is actually just better than what we had before. And even if we ship it with a lot of bugs, it's still going to be better. Sometimes it may not be obvious in the design phase that is going to be immediately better. You might have to put it in, in a prototype form to actually see that it actually is going to be better. The trap with doing that is that you really have to set your dev goggles aside. When you're trying to consider whether or not this feature is already better, already awesome, you have to look at it through the lens of what if we just literally shipped it like this? Not, okay, this is seeming really promising, and as a dev, I can see how this is all going to become way better. Because sometimes with features that come online really hot like that, and are really awesome right away, you can be misled, and you see a trajectory that looks like this to the moon, but when actually they are is something that is really quick to get good, and then they're stuck there, and they can't really get any better. And if good isn't actually shippable, some features sometimes can get to this seems like it will be good someday in a couple of days of work and never get past that. And you end up being trapped by this feature that everyone agreed was amazing, but then never fully coalesces into the feature that it was promising to be all along. Put it in, do a prototype, but really be honest with yourself when you're thinking, is this actually better than what we had before, before you make that final decision? Hopefully you get cases like that, where it's so clear as that, where the new direction is just so much superior to what you have, there's no other way that anyone would want to go. That's a pretty rare situation. Usually you're in something that is more on the other side of it. So I may be forcing this example a little bit, but let's look at the endings of Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. The end of Mass Effect 2 is actually kind of clunky. It is paced in a kind of odd way, but it is the suicide mission. So it is constantly just hammering you with these emotional moments, showing you the consequences of all the actions you've taken throughout the rest of the game. So overall, it elevates itself and in the doing, elevates all the things you did before this moment. And even though it's kind of clunky and kind of pace strange, it elevates the entire game by existing. Mass Effect 3 is actually trying to do something more ambitious. It's trying to put a bow on all of the things that you've done across the entire game, to knit it all to a single moment where all the themes and everything come together into one singular conclusion. And you can imagine that if, if it had worked, this would be better. This would bring it all together. It's a single, conclusive, explosive ending to the trilogy, if it had worked. But because it only works if it all comes together, because it doesn't all come together, it fails. And unlike Mass Effect 2, where the ending, just by existing, elevates all the things that came before, the Mass Effect 3 ending, by existing, undermines some of the things before because it brings into question the consequences of what you had already done and if it even mattered. So with Mass Effect 2, each piece you do adds a little bit and improves the quality of what's going on. Each suicide beat you add makes it all work a little bit better. If you'd only done a couple, it still kind of works. If, if you add another one, it makes it a little bit better. Whereas with the Mass 3 ending, it only works if it all works as a total. And that's the common characteristic of all the awful until they're awesome features, is that they only work when it all works. Whereas the better right away features 
tend to consist of a lot of sub-features that each can somewhat stand on their own. So you're able to staple them on and glue them on, and then you're able to build to something bigger by layering thing on top of thing on top of thing. But you can sort of see the difference between the two. If it's a hole, it's smooth and whole and consistent and atomic. Whereas if it's built out of a bunch of parts, it's going to almost by design be a little lumpy around the edges. The churn and backsliding introduced by a direction shift needs to be weighed against the potential quality lift coming out the other side. Let me see if I can summarize my philosophy when it comes to deciding whether or not to go with a new direction. Every change introduces churn. You should be trying to finalize the content that you can when you're in the part of development that is leading you towards finishing. Things that are good enough should be allowed to finish, shouldn't have constant change and churn injected into them. A great movie is three good scenes and no bad ones. So let the things that are not bad be not bad but you still need those three good scenes. And it does kind of matter where those moments lie in your game. So sometimes you are going to have features or storytelling moments that have to be better than adequate. And in those cases, you might have no choice but to accept the higher risk version. Sometimes ideas or features or directions are going to come along that are very low effort to surpass what you already have. In that case, remember that it still introduces churn. So you have to consider whether or not that impact, that potential hit to your overall stability of the game as a whole is worth it. But often, yeah, those are worth it. It's just if it's going to go up and surpass your existing feature with almost no effort or less effort than you were planning to spend to finish the feature that already exists, go for it. Sometimes you have no choice, however, and you're going to take that awful until it's great risk for the very important features that have to be great. And you're going to have to take that leap. But most of the time, that's not what you should be doing. Most of the time, you should accept what you have right now, allow the micro iteration that comes through the process of filing bugs and triaging your bug list to guide the existing feature towards the best version of itself that it's able to be given the path that you're already on. Broadly, I think it kind of looks like this. The place to avoid change is in the middle of complexity. If it's a big swing for the fences, Hail Mary thing that is going to add five points to your Metacritic, yeah, that's worth the conversation. If it's micro level qualitative feedback working through your bug and triage system, that's what you want as well. It's that middle of the road feedback that you need to start to purge from your project as you get closer and closer to shipping. You had earlier phases where that feedback was hopefully being given and incorporated. Now that you're starting the process of finaling, it's not time for that. You will occasionally have these big things that just aren't working, but reserve your massive efforts for as few things as possible so you can really put in the effort that's required to make those work, to make those sing. Let your bug process deal with the rest. So how do you know if a feature is going to raise the Metacritic by five points? First of all, that's probably an oversimplification. There are reasons why you may want to go after a big feature that have nothing to do with Metacritic. If this feature will allow your game to appeal to a lot, much larger audience, that's also a desirable characteristic. But for both of these things, for both it moves the score, the Metacritic score of the game and broadens your potential appeal, I think the actual characteristics of the, those features are actually the same. You need to shift the conversation of your game in a marked way. 
So the question you need to be asking yourself is, does this feature change the conversation? If I add the ability to have kids into my game, that shifts the conversation. That becomes one of the tent poles of the game. Even if the feature isn't really central to the gameplay, it alters the perception of the game sufficiently enough to change the conversation. So that kind of swing for the fences feature is only really worth it if it is changing the conversation. If all you're doing is just a better version of the game you were already making, that can make the Metacritic creep up. But when you're looking at large feature changes that are only changing things at a minor level, what I would recommend, what I've often seen, is that you're better off focusing yourself on finishing what you already have and polishing what you already have. Because your radical change is always introducing bugs and churn. So if you are not fundamentally shifting the conversation about your game, chances are you're much better off focusing down on polish and bug fixing and optimization than you are pulling the game into a new direction that isn't really new. If it is new, if it does change the conversation, then that might be worth doing because if it reshapes the conversation sufficiently, you're changing the review landscape. You're potentially changing who reviews your game and that might raise your Metacritic. You're changing the audience that you're drawing in and that might be something you want to do. When you're looking at an individual feature and saying, is this worth it? That's the rubric for me is, is it enough to change the conversation about what this game is and what this game is trying to do. Most of your game needs to be good enough. Occasionally, some things need to be amazing. Reserve the big explosions and setbacks and revisions for the last part of your project just for those things that need to be amazing. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. We also have merch. I'm wearing both high tea on the high seas hoodie, and I'm also wearing the if you're doing triage and you should be doing triage shirt. There is a link to that below this video as well, which also helps the channel out. What do you think? Should you always be striving for perfection? Do you think games would ever ship if they did that? How do you decide when good enough is good enough? How do you decide when you need to open it back up and swing for the fences and decide that this is the risk that's worth taking? Let me know that down in the comments. I will see you again soon. Thank you.